every class breakdown in Diablo Immortal. Gonna be joined with Darth Micro here in a second, but wanted to talk about this list, how it works. It's gonna break down every single category so you can get a better idea. It's just not gonna be a tier list like S tier, or A tier, or whatever. It's gonna actually be specific to each game mode. And then also on the other side, they're, they're weighted based on how good some of the things are, how important it is to be good at whatever those things are. So if you're really good at PVP, for example, that is weighted way higher than say being beginner friendly. If you're really good in solo play, that's weighted way higher than other stuff. Because those are the things that really matter at the end of the day, like how good you are in PVP, that's gonna be the majority of your play time. So it makes sense to weight them. Before we get in the video, I noticed we have a ton of new viewers watching the channel. 94.4% of you are unsubscribed. If you can hit that subscribe button, it would mean a lot. It helps out the channel a ton. And with that, guys, let's get into the video. All right, here's the list here, starting with Barbarian. All of the different categories are listed here, so you can kind of help break down where they excel, where they're a little weak in. Me, personally, I think when it comes to Barbarian, they are in a position where they're they're kind of hedging their bets a little bit in group play they have decent but not great team buffs and then in solo play they have great aoe damage and they can help clear minions really well it's just not that valuable to bring to a team pretty much everyone has great aoe damage and then their single target damage is kind of lacking that's how i would look at the barbarian class as a whole yeah i haven't really got a chance to play him too much um it seems about accurate from what i've heard i've been having to kind of live through you in terms of how the barbarian act unfortunately for pvp like i think a lot of people are going in thinking they were going to be a really good class for pvp just right now, I think the thing that holds them back is the, the game mode where it's 8v8 and they don't really excel in this. You camp a zone and you can put all the CC there and you have necros and mages and all this stuff in the way. And it's very difficult for a barb to kind of contribute. I think barbs are amazing on in battlegrounds on defense side. If, if anything, we might want to separate an offense and a defense side because I think on defense, they're awesome because they could really leverage their undying fury. And then they could just keep going to the zone and being annoying. And then so they become great really annoying. In and like the skirmishes too, like the the three v three, like the Rite of Exile mm -hmm. and the Ancient Arena, like things where it's smaller amounts of people, they seem to be better too. We're living in a longer time. Yeah, completely agree with that. Like it's just those kind of things. Like especially the Ancient Arena, that's something that can actually be repeatable by a lot of uh, the general player base. Whereas you know, the three v three is one of those things where it's such a niche of a small percentage of players get to play it that like you know it'd be cool if they're good there, but I don't think many people are actually going to take advantage of that. You know. As far as barbarians go, I think if you have Phoenix Ashes, they might be like, you can't really put it into points, but it's like the most annoying person to deal with. Well, where it's, it's you have to kill them, what was it, three times? Uh, yeah. Basically, yes. right? And their cooldowns, 30 seconds. Because when it comes to Phoenix Ashes, it works with barbarians exactly how you'd want it to. Whereas if you have Undying Fury, then it's going to proc that first. And then if you don't have Undying Fury, then it procs Phoenix Ashes. So it's actually built really well. The thing that's not built well is Cheat Death. So Cheat Death works with the Gladiator Tree where you get stunned, but then you're getting stunned with your Undying Fury. So then the time that you would be able to lifesteal with Undying Fury, you're stunned by your own Cheat Death. So it's kind of counterintuitive there. So it's not 100% perfect. Yeah, it's not like, yeah, dream scenario for a Barbarian. But let's move well, on to like... the next class. Well, overall, I think they're they're solid. They have decent support, decent damage. Oh, one thing that they really excel at, in my opinion, is going to be Challenge Rifts. Undying Fury is amazing in really? Challenge Rifts, and they really punch up well there. If you really want to be able to push a hard in Challenge Rifts, the Barbarian is going to do really well there. See, that's actually something I was kind of curious because I've always kind of thought that they would struggle there just due to the fact that they're like melee and all that. But I'm thinking that about the Undying, so you can just sit there and tank like minions that are basically... Yeah, that okay. and... And Interesting. Your, your strat of, um, I don't know if it's your strat, like whoever strat it was. I learned it from you. The You pass the first minions, you go to the end, and then you let yourself die, and then oh. make sure you spawn the boss you know, there. I've heard they nerfed that. I haven't tested um, it, but I heard that um, they nerfed it in the patch. That's a bummer, because that made barbarians, like it covered all their bases. You can have these massive things, and then... Yeah, at the end where they struggle against the boss, at least I can just keep spawning and dying. So it was um, a good, a it, it, was a good it was a good uh, tool to use, but I, I think that let's skip one and go to your class, Necro. This is the one sure. you played a ton. A lot of tens and nines here for this class. What what are your thoughts on this list compared um, to your thoughts on it? I mean, it's probably pretty accurate. I've been I've been memeing all about it, being like, Yeah, Necro's bad, like yeah, it needs a buff, you know, because obviously I don't want my class to be destroyed. But the reality is Necro's probably not okay, like and and they're getting worse. I mean, worse is in they're getting statements they're, they, they're disgusting uh, in, in the best of ways you know what i mean mm -hmm. like they make you sick in a way that you love to be sick i, I don't know how much clearer i could uh, be about them wait, here. They're, actually they're, like, they're ill are they ill 
they are ill they're, in okay. fact uh okay. they, they are a great class dude and mm-hmm. i mean not only are they great in pve but they're great in p like they have it all i mean they, they've really got it all they've got so many tools they've got like defensive tools that are really good they've got c tools they got high damage tools they got ranged abilities i mean they i will say that i was a little disappointed with some of the new legendaries i basically tested all but one of them uh-huh. and um some of them are not as exciting as i would have liked to be fair um but there's some of them that are real winners in there that are just like actually really fired it's not like they didn't already have good legendaries necro they're good everywhere so i, I could mm-hmm. talk about them for a while but no i think the list is pretty close to accurate the only thing i would say is like i think everyone's kind of the same in dungeons i think dungeons are like not hard and you don't really need except maybe mm-hmm. crusaders like way better than others by right but it's like i, I think the necro maybe is a little bit better in the dungeons than oh, the list says, but just oh. because of the damage but i think in the beginning it can be really be seen like it doesn't very much because i think necro needs like you need a lot of the builds and you need a lot of stuff to play before they really come together like getting the summon uh com- uh set, set bonus is huge because mm-hmm. of the crit rate and stuff there's a lot of things that make necro get better like all of a sudden their damage is probably yeah i completely like agree with that i was gonna say like a six on here like we need to bump that that number up it's uh it's close but it's yeah it's, seven it's, maybe an eight there. like i feel like when you get all of the summon stuff you get like the magic of eff- um, like the affixes on your gear like to increase their summon damage like if we had dps charge we can really know but they have so many different damage sources that i feel like it would be significantly higher i guess it depends what build they're running too because like mm-hmm. some of the builds are like sort of a zero damage type of build on purpose yeah. like so if you're running that then i think it's cool that you can run like Z- zdps and actually um contribute like they have the support yeah. to be able to do that, uh, right, which is awesome. And they have a lot of build diversity. So you can, if it gets a little boring in one class, you can actually, or one build, you can change it up, uh, which is nice. Kind of rare in this. Necro doesn't get boring. There's a lot of different class styles. So mm-hmm. um, I'm, I, yeah, no, I, I, I couldn't run any higher. I could go on. It's just going to be me recommending it a bunch for a while. So. so next, let's go to Demon Hunter here. Demon Hunter, I think this class is probably the most straightforward class in the sense that the whole point of the class is just good damage and they're squishy kind of ranged attacker not much but it's honest work (laughs) yes and so it's i think the build diversity is not really there too much it's it's more about just like popping your vengeance that that's that's pretty much the main goal there um i switched to demon hunter i've been liking it a lot it is pretty fun to just be able to melt waves of enemies um, the convenience factor of being able to attack and move from a ranged perspective is really nice. Um, going from a barb to a DH, like I'm infinitely more squishy than I was before. Like being as a barb, you get carried in survivability in a lot of scenarios. So having to actually position and, and preemptively um, jump out is is kind of a new, new thing. Um, I'm kind of curious what you're thinking about the PvP with the Demon Hunter. Whenever I see them, I must say they really bother me. For them, they have surprisingly high amounts of CC. I don't have all the legendaries yet, but the things that are really good for them, I feel like it's like the multi-shot, the frost shot. I think they're the wolves that they shoot where they can kind of stun and push people back. It has a lot of priority over a lot of the moves that I had as a barb trying to get onto them. And they have a decent amount of um, maneuverability with their, their grapple. I think that's really good. When you combine all that with their damage, with being able to move and shoot, and a lot of their damage moves are just like, they put it in an area and they can move away. They don't have to channel it like a mage or like, like oh, a I love it when you can do stuff like that. That's something yeah. Necro could do that I love. So And then their their Vengeance cooldown makes him way stronger, but it's a smaller cooldown. Like I'm used to Wrath of the Berserker being a 30 second cooldown. And it's like, I become really powerful with that on a Barbarian, but it's only a 20 second cooldown with a, a Demon Hunter. So it's like your, your big steroid is coming up pretty quick. And then the new legendaries that came out have the new one where it increases their critical hit chance, but lowers their life. I can see that doing a ton more damage, like giving crit to a demon hunter is pretty insane, even even if it does make them. So, are you so now that you've swapped to demon hunter from the barbarian, uh, are you feeling like you regret it, or you think that you, you actually are liking the demon uh, hunter? I like it. I feel like I got exactly what was advertised, like a ton more damage and the convenience of a range class, and you really see the damage numbers. Like it was pretty clear that they do so much more damage than a barb. Hmm. Uh, I wanted to like actually like feel it, you know, like I can watch people yeah. do it, but I wanted my gear to be over on here. Um, I do miss the legendaries and I do need to farm a ton of legendaries and I think they're going to get even stronger. But if I'm already happy now with, I, I have one legendary equipped right now and I'm already happy. <laughs> so I, I can imagine it just getting better All from right, here. Fair enough. I think the only thing too, that's a bummer about them is that I might just get bored with the builds. Whereas on Barb, there was like four different builds I had with uh, this, I have one. It's like this, and then I maybe change out one move, it looks like. 
and maybe that's going to change maybe i'm going to like mess with the builds but at the moment like the standard build seems very um in there it's kind of like an 80 carry where it's like you just build one way it's all optimized for damage and there it is that's your build that would be the only drawback potentially compared to the necro where you have all these different things you can try so then what's next on the list so we covered demon hunter we covered barb we covered necro, necro. let's go uh, we, let's go say say there it is as a person that has not played much Seder, i think this is by far the the class i'm most excited to have in my team like by far yeah it's this is this would be the class that I can see other classes getting kicked over in party environments because these are the ones that everyone wants. Yeah, I had to choose like it's a bar. It's Diablo's version of a, of having a healer where it's like, oh, we got mm -hmm. heals, like, you know, and you always want them in the party. The banner is too fun. Like, being able to see yourself crit all the time. Everyone wants to see a frenzy. You see noticeable time differences in your dungeon runs. It's, it's great in, like, there's never a time where you don't want banner in all game modes, so it's already right there. That's really good. But then they have another ability that allows them to put a invulnerability area on the ground i think the best defensive support move in the entire game so not only do they have the best offensive support move but they have the best defensive support move then when you combine that with good cc and good maneuverability i think they're easily the best support class in the entire game for like a team environment or well, not only that but it's like the the game it, it's a game where support matters like mm -hmm. it's not the type of game where it's like you know we're not playing unreal tournament 1990 this is a game where abs having buffs literally make your runs like yeah and when you're grinding you know tens and twenties of uh these dungeons that last you know anywhere from you know three to five minutes shaving off those two minutes there every single time is going to be a big time time saver so that that's why they're they're so popular and i would say that they bring those effects without needing to spend money like they're one of the best value classes like anyone that doesn't spend that much that's money true. okay here you want to be useful pick a crusader you're going to bring the best it's all kit based not stat based good point makes them better too I think the only drawback with Wizard, in my opinion, is that a lot of their moves are channeling. It makes it a little clunky in the beginning when you're playing them. But once you get over that initial phase of the Wizard and start to really have your build, get your legendaries, get optimized, easily the most annoying class in PvP, you know, with the crystal and being able to attack and channel out the crystal, they can attack from like across the screen and it locks on uh, to people. So I would say they're easily one of the best, if not the best, PvP classes. So Wizard black hole mm -hmm. while it doesn't trigger chip of the stone flat one of the best like there's an there's an ability that you can get with them that makes the black hole move down the lane mm -hmm. and you can use that to basically cover more area with it and the black hole itself is like probably the most frustrating i think in the game i think the black hole is because like you get com basically complete loss of control even though it's qualified as mm -hmm. and it's going to like shove you down the lane because most people use the black hole it, it drags you right in the middle so it easily makes it where everyone else who has any ranged ability um and it's got this giant red circle that makes it obvious for everyone like hey hit this guy right it, here for it, the exactly effect. i was gonna say that it was like hey this is the hey kill this guy right now go go for this guy like everyone on the other team like without saying a word knows to like you need to kill this guy asap he's done and as a melee uh on the barb that by far the most annoying ability in the game like that well that plus necro um pillar were like the two most annoying things possible like it can move past me and then if i kind of move back a little bit i'll get sucked in and then it's like an even longer cc because i was yeah. further away from the thing so it i have to get my characters to catch back <laughs> yep. up to it and it's, i'm like it, it's like even longer than the than uh, so completely agree with you there so i think the thing with wizard is i can see people getting discouraged with wizard early but then if you stick with it you're gonna have easily the best class for the hardest content that actually matters i'm this is the class that i see on the top of the charts that when I look at them, the class that I see punch up the most, their contribution to their power there's, level. There's a couple, I mean, PvP, I totally agree, but there's a couple caveats I'd like to yeah. add. They're kind of annoying to play a little bit because you there you have these big cooldown windows. Like everyone see the crystal and the beam, but what they don't see is the long ass cooldown the crystal has. Mm -hmm. Or then you have this beam where it's like, oh, I have this beam and the whole point is to like do it into the crystal and you're kind of waiting for like your combo opportunities. Since it has some of the longest cooldown, yeah. your moves can take a really get back up and it can be very, and and there's a less variety build. There only seems to be a couple builds. There's like the, the, the winds plus the fire, like you have some kind of firestorm type of build. 
or you have like the laser build. So the build, the diversity isn't so great. I mean, they're good. They're really mm -hmm. good for what they do, but just there's a few, there's, I feel like there's some reasons not to play them for the average person. Yeah. And they're definitely not beginner friendly. That's right on the list too. Uh -huh. Like the two, the two is correct. They, it, you have to have the right legendaries for them to combo with each other in order for them to really work. And they're also like, a lot of their moves re require them to be like in positions where you're almost dying. Like the, uh, the, the, ice ray channeling where you have to channel this aoe like you have to kind of be in the middle of from the little bit i've played mage like there there is some stuff about mage I just, but when you hit their big opening combos like that crystal combo or the black hole etc it's some of the most satisfying gameplay out of all of the classes you playing them are they fun yeah. for you uh, yes yeah, no. okay and then lastly we have the monk from a pve perspective like i'm usually not excited to see a monk on my team but from a pvp perspective i I'm definitely excited to see a monk on my team. I think they're incredibly good and really survivable. Lots of CC, lots of untargetability. It's like they just force themselves to survive a ton. I think they're a really good disruptor in this. And as a melee class, that's tough to do. Range classes just excel well, especially with the game mode, the AP8. For them to still be useful and really powerful, I think is really good. Seem to me kind of remind me of Shaco. They're a very mobile, teleporty, annoying, hard to get your hands on type of class. They're fun though. Like I think that I think they're one of the more fun classes it was really painful to open world farm with yeah that's one of the the drawbacks to them they, they reminded the wizard in, in that sense kind of maybe even worse than the wizard in that sense where it's like they're really clunky to get going but once you get them going they're, they're useful in the in the content that matters in my opinion or some of the higher weighted content in my opinion getting there is the the difficult part I, one of the benefits is they're kind of rare not many people play them so you're going to be unique in that sense not going to bring that much overall damage probably one of the lowest uh hitting damage classes if you're you're on the fence about it you want to pvp a ton i think monk is going to be one of the strongest classes you can pick i, th I think the where you're right on about it is how many invulnerability teleports they get and kind of disappear off the map that's kind of where the mm -hmm. secret sauce of them is you get a lot of invulnerability time almost by accident so they can be quite annoying they're really hard to deal with yeah if you're a pvp -er, I, I think that's the list there it'll be linked down in the description if you guys want to check it out any closing thoughts you have on this list here um i think with as new legendaries get added into the game maybe the list will be altered up so maybe check back in the future by hitting the bell to see uh what the future oh, yeah. list Gr may hold point. because Excellent you're gonna point. need you're gonna need some uh -huh. ones to update it as we get also so we're gonna end the video here. Be sure to check out DM Diablo Mortal. His channel will be linked down in the description as well. Also links down to all the other content creators that contributed to this list will be linked down there as well. And with that,